completed the going through glycolysis and the reactions of glycolysis, pyruvate oxidation, and the citric acid cycle. Uh, each of these processes produce NADH molecules. So NADH is our electron carrier, right? Remember, it's going to carry, be carrying two electrons uh, and a proton. Some of the NADH are made in the cytoplasm during glycolysis, and then the other NADH are made inside the mitochondria. So this is this little sketch here is representing the mitochondria. This area here that we're looking at is right up here uh, is the mitochondrial matrix. Uh, it's called the matrix of the mitochondria. That's this space here. And so in that space is where citric acid cycle occurs. Uh, in this space is where pyruvate oxidation occurs. So those NADH are already in this particular space that we're talking about. Now the mitochondria has two membranes, and this is just a, a rough sketch of it, but this is representing a phospholipid bilayer uh, that is the, called the inner membrane. And then this is a second phospholipid bi bilayer that is the outer membrane. And then there's a space here in between the two, and this is called the intermembrane space. Okay, so we have phospholipid bilayer, intermembrane space, the inner membrane, and then the mitochondrial matrix. That's the, the layout. So we have some NADH out here in the cytoplasm. They have to come into the matrix, and then we have the other NADH here. What we're going to look at is the electron transport chain that's going to be taking these two electrons and then shuttling them from molecule to molecule. And as that happens, what's going to occur is that the electrons, which are in a high energy state, are going to drop. So if we have NADH, if you remember back in the uh, enzyme and energetics um, lectures, this is Gibbs free energy, this is en energy. What's going to happen is that each time the electrons are passed, so this is when we're going to take those two electrons and pass them on to something else. So what's going to happen is now as we enter the electron transport chain, there's going to be something called complex one that we're going to get to. And as that happens, the, the electrons are going to be dropping to a lower energy level. And then these same electrons are going to be passed on to other molecules. And eventually the electrons are going to go to oxygen. Okay, so oxygen is going to be... Uh, we call the final electron acceptor. All right, that's oxygen. And that's going to be at the end of this. And e so each time the electrons are going to be passed along, they're going to go lower energy, lower energy, lower energy, which means energy has to be given off. Energy can't be created. We can't destroy energy. It changes form. It's transformed in some way. And that's what is the whole kind of point of the electron transport chain. It's to take those electrons that are in a high energy state transport them to a low energy state, meanwhile converting the energy into something else. And that's this is what we're going to talk about is the something else that it's converted into. So we'll, we'll get started here. NADH is going to enter into the electron transport chain. Uh, and the electron transport chain is made up of three proteins that are transmembrane proteins. <clears throat> the first protein uh, is called complex one. Uh, and that doesn't mean a whole lot. It's just the first first one. So we're going to give it an ac its actual name, uh, and its actual name is um, NADH dehydrogenase. So NADH dehydrogenase. It tells you what it does. Okay, it's going to take the NADH molecule. And we're going to leave with NAD+. Plus. Now the two electrons from NADH are going to be now held here at this protein. What this protein is going to do is then pass along those electrons to something else. Right, this is a molecule here called ubiquinone. Ubiquinone is a, a lipid molecule. It's going to be part of the inner membrane. Uh, it is not a protein. Um, it is not an active transport pump. It's simply a shuttle. So what's going to happen here is that these two electrons are going to move from 
NADH dehydrogenase to ubiquinone. When that happens, uh, they are going to then go down. So that's ubiquinone. Well, I'll just do this, the Q actually is the symbol for it. So I'll just put the Q there. They're going to drop an energy level. And as they drop in energy level, the energy has to be given off. So the way in which this energy is given off um, is through the action of that protein to do active transport. So here inside the mitochondrial matrix are protons. So, and so if you remember this, uh, a proton is the same thing as a hydrogen ion. Right? A hydrogen atom is one electron, one proton. We lose the electron, we just have a proton, and we also call it a hydrogen ion. So we, we use those terms interchangeably, proton and hydrogen ion. And here we're going to talk about hydrogen ions, not hydrogen, but the, the just a proton, essentially. So these are proton pumps. So what they're going to do is take the energy and use it to pump three protons into the intermembrane space. And so that's the first step. The energy from the NADH, essentially going from NADH to ubiquinone, is going to drop and the protein, who's an active transport pump, uses that energy to do active transport. So this, this area here is going to have a high concentration of hydrogen ions, or protons, uh, and so that it's an active transport process that requires energy. But that's not the end. This is the active electron transport chain. So there's a whole chain of events that are going to occur, and the electrons are going to keep flowing. So that's all we're going to do is kind of step through uh, what happens next um, and, and out after that until we get down to oxygen. So next here, and we'll come back to number two, but this is actually called complex three. So complex three uh, here is called cytochrome reductase. Now, there are some other names uh, that you'll see it uh, called um, by, but I'm going to use cytochrome reductase because it is one of the names that's used for it, and it's also descriptive of, of what's, what it's going to do. So it just helps you remember that, um, its job and, and kind of what's going to happen next. So cytochrome reductase, or complex 3, is going to take the electrons from ubiquinone, and it's going to pass them on to something called cytochrome C. So now cytochrome C, like ubiquinone, is another carrier of um, electrons. It's not an active transport pump, so it's just part of the membrane structure here. And it's going to receive the electrons from complex three and just hold on to them temporarily until it passes them to something else. Meanwhile, uh, as the electrons go to complex three, they're going to drop, you know, again in energy level. They're going to keep dropping. So the energy level is going to keep going down for these electrons. The electrons are going to keep losing energy. And that energy here is going to be used to do active transport again. So this one is also going to pump three protons into the intermembrane space. So now we have two electrons from NADH starting off here in the electron transport chain. They go to complex one called NADH dehydrogenase. It'll take those two electrons, use the energy of the electrons to pump three protons, and then pass the electrons on. The electrons then move to another active transport pump. It takes the energy from those electrons, does active transport, passes the electrons on. So the two electrons are now at cytochrome C. We go to complex four. This one is called cytochrome oxidase. So if you remember, and you, and you need to remember, again, for our exam, that uh, oxidation and reduction reactions, reduction uh, means to gain electrons, and oxidize is to remove electrons. So um, a reductase is going to give electrons to cytochrome C. So cytochrome C is going to gain electrons, and oxidase is going to remove electrons. So it's a cytochrome oxidase that takes electrons from cytochrome C. So those two electrons are then going to move to complex four, the cytochrome oxidase. And now cytochrome oxidase, we're going to kind of make an extra note of it, all right, to a particular member this other aspect of it. This is the protein in the mitochondria, so essentially the protein in your cells that actually uses the oxygen. So you know that you have to breathe oxygen to survive. So 
many people though don't really know why like what what is the purpose of the oxygen what does oxygen do a lot of people say well oxygen's carried by red blood cells but the red blood cells are just carriers again of the oxygen the what is the oxygen do what's the purpose of oxygen the purpose of it is to be the final electron acceptor at the end of the electron transport chain it's to be able to allow this process to be a spontaneous process for the energy to flow downward and do this active transport to allow the conversion of energy from electrons to a hydrogen ion or proton gradient. Uh, that's going to what's that is what's going to allow the cell to be able to make a lot of ATP. This process isn't going to be making ATP itself, but it's going to be an important step in the conversion of the energy into something that the cell can use to make the ATP. So it's just sort of an important intermediate step from the sugars taking their electrons to NADH, now taking those electrons to do active transport. So once again here, active transport again, three more protons get pumped. So we get three, six, nine protons. Uh, I've seen some different uh, places publish different numbers for this. I've seen 2.7 as the number of protons uh, pumped, which um, uh, it doesn't make sense for us to, to talk about actual protons with a point something. So we're gonna use the round number and say three, three protons uh, are gonna be pumped. And this is the protein that is then going to interact with oxygen. So the two electrons are going to go to oxygen, and then it's going to pick up um, some other hydrogen ions here and actually form water molecule. Now for us, we don't really we're not as concerned about the water itself. Um, that just happens. Okay, so but we're but that is part of the flow of electrons. The electrons are coming from NADH, essentially to oxygen which then eventually becomes water molecule. What we want to be focused on is what's happening up here in this intermembrane space. In the intermembrane space, we are increasing the hydrogen ion concentration. That concentration gradient is stored energy. And that energy is going to be used to make the ATP. But it doesn't happen here because this is actually the end. This is the end of the electron transport chain. And we didn't make any uh, ATP during the electron transport chain. Before I completely finish up with this, though, we'll address one sort of missing issue here. We have one, three, and four, and kind of, you know, where's, where's two? So complex two, if you remember back to my um, talk on citric acid cycle, so in the citric acid cycle, there was uh, one point in the citric acid cycle where an oxidation occurs. It's the oxidation that makes the FADH2 molecule, if you remember. That also carries two electrons, uh, just like the NADH does. But here is an actual protein. It's an enzyme in the electron transport chain. It's bound to the inner membrane of the mitochondria, and it's the place where the oxidation event occurs that picks up the electrons um, with, NA, with the FAD to, be, to, to become FADH2. So the FADH2 are actually bound. They're attached here to this protein, so they're technically attached to the membrane. They're kind of attached in, into the electron transport chain itself. The NADH are free. The NADH could be out in the cytoplasm. The NADH are made freely in the mitochondrial matrix. They have to come to this particular protein to bind to it and then transfer the electrons. FADH2 is different in that it's actually bound here. The significance of that is, number one, uh, complex two isn't an active transport pump. It's not a transmembrane protein. It's a peripheral protein, so it's only attached to one side. So there's no pumping of hydrogen ions. The second thing is uh, the location. Because it comes in here, it shuttles its electrons directly to ubiquinone. Ubiquinone's job is to give them to complex three of the, of the cytochrome reductase. We skip complex one, totally bypass it, which means we skip one of the active transport pumps. That means the two electrons from the FADH2 will be responsible for the pumping of three, six protons and then they go to oxygen, and that's it. So fewer protons are pumped, which means it adds less uh, energy to the concentration gradient. FADH2 and NADH are, are fairly equivalent um, in their overall free energy uh, that's available, but we just don't utilize all the energy from the FADH2 because of the location. So the location does matter. So you know, outlining this 
drop sketching it out with the labels is important for you know just not because you have to do it but also for a number of other reasons as well to kind of understand the process uh, of what's going on so the next step is to find out how does this stored energy get converted into ATP All right, and that's what we're going to talk about one more uh, transmembrane protein that's going to allow diffusion and then take the energy from diffusion in order to, to build the ATP molecules. And that's going to be the, the last step of this. All right? But this is the electron transport chain, and this is the end of the electron transport chain. The next part is in addition to this. It's not electron transport. It's something else. All right.